Hey, I'm Nick. I'm Lee, and this is our two-year-old Australian Shepherd, Cooper. And this is our 2004 Lagoon 440 Flybird Edition. We're gonna welcome you on board right now and uh, give you a quick tour. All right, so here's our galley. This is where we do the majority of our cooking when we're not grilling. Uh, it all happens here from, uh, we've got a nice three burner stove. I keep my butcher's block on top of here just because it adds a little bit of counter space. Um, space here is also at a premium. So um, try and maximize it the best that we can. But three burner stove, we've got a nice little oven down here. Um, but to supplement, it's kind of a smaller oven. So to supplement that, we have an electric air fryer just above, and that's still more than enough space if we're trying to entertain uh, you know, a group of friends. Uh, we can cook, it just, we can cook exactly as much food as we need. Um, here we have our little knife collection on a magnetic holder. On the back side of here is where we keep our Ziploc bags and our mug collection that we've been accumulating over the years. Um, cookbooks, treats for Cooper, and then all up here is just a large amount of storage for cups and we've got some pots and pans and plates all up in here. Another nice thing uh, about this galley setup is having the three sinks. So we get two sinks for kind of washing and then we utilize the third one as you can see here is like a drying rack. So it's nice to let the dishes all drip dry um, instead of having them out on the counter to dry. So moving more over here to the right, got a, a nice little tray here with all our fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, some nice new fresh California oranges. Uh, water filter and obviously the essential coffee maker so we can function properly every day. Okay, so down below here, uh, it's just standard like below sink storage with all of our cleaning stuff, some, some tin foil, slow cooker, um, the rest of our pots and pans we kind of, we keep down here, miscellaneous cooking things. And then our, one of our refrigerators is right here behind this door. So all of our drawers and cabinets have special latches on them. Uh, you push them in to unlock them and that allows them to slide. Um, so that way when we're out at sea and we're in, in any sort of seas, the rolling motion of the boat doesn't let the cabinets open or the drawers slam open and everything spills everywhere. So it's really nice just to push the button in and pull and then it locks closed. Uh, so welcome to the nav station here on board um, our Laboon. Uh, so all of our electronics are Ray Marine, as you can see by the logos. So this is where we have our chart plotter and various other sensors that will let us know um, the winds, the sea state, the temperature, things like that, that we need to know to make sure that we're going to be navigating into safe seas. We have um, some nice chart storage under here and then a nice large deck space to be able to work on all of our charts if we were working on charts that weren't electronic. We also have over here on the starboard side, we've got a freezer. So it's got three tiers in there, which can store anything that we need to keep fresh for a long period of time while we're on longer ocean transits. We also have a, um, a second set of throttle controls. We'll be going up um, top side later on in the video here, but um, we also have the controls for the port and starboard diesel down below in case we need to make any corrections to the mechanical side of sailing while underway. We also have the entertainment system, which is Bluetooth, so we can have all the speakers throughout the boat playing whatever music we want to play connected via Bluetooth. And we also have various communication systems on board, whether it's through satellite or bridge to bridge, which we use to hail other vessels and um, communicate with them our passing intentions when in close quarters at sea. So this is our collection of co um, military coins here. They're called challenge coins. It's just a naval and Marine Corps tradition. When you usually meet other commands or you do a great job, someone will award you with a coin. Uh, for myself, I'm still in the Navy. I'm the navigator on board an LCS. Lee just got out of the Marine Corps back in May. He was an amphibious assault vehicle uh, executive officer. And this is our collection of coins that we've collected throughout our time in the military service.
All right, and then uh, we are currently on board our 2004 Lagoon 440 Flybridge Edition, which we moved on about a year ago. Uh, we've made it our home step by step. We've got a lot of projects going on one by one, but um, slowly we are working up to make it blue water ready. We're going to sail it around the world one day once we both retire from work and um, experience as much of the globe as possible together. So yeah, it's, uh, this boat is was manufactured in 2004. Mm -hmm. It's a Lagoon 440 is the model. Um, and we are actually the second owners. Uh, the, the, the first owners of the boat took it, they sailed the South Pacific and then continued on to complete a circumnavigation around the, around the globe, um, then returned to New Zealand. So um, it's really, you know, if the, the walls on the boat could talk, I'm sure they'd have a ton of stories mm -hmm. because this boat, has, this boat has seen the world. So, so we're hoping to continue that do the same that story uh so we actually met online lee was brave enough to meet me and all my navy buddies downtown at a bar in san diego and from there we spent uh, i think our first date lasted three whole days didn't it it, did, it was yeah. a three whole day weekend so and lucky you you get to stick with me for three whole days but then three whole days turned into a whole lifetime of adventure we got married about a year ago um here in san diego and from from there, Lee got out of the Marine Corps um, about nine months ago, and he was able to move in with me, and we slowly worked towards our dream of moving aboard a boat. This is our inside hangout area where it can seat around eight to 10 people. We've got our table here, which eventually we're looking to convert into a high-low table, which might be a little lower down, convert this into an extra bed area for additional people to sleep on board for long transits. But otherwise, there's storage underneath all these areas. We also have our uh, first 32-inch screen here with above our liquor locker, which is where we keep our gaming systems and all of our drinks that we like to serve while underway. Oh hey, welcome to the starboard hull, which is what we call on a catamaran the owner's version. Um, a lot of catamarans are built for charter, so they'll have two bedrooms on the port side, two bedrooms on the starboard side, at least of this length. But for us, we're lucky enough to have taken on an owner's version where we have the entire length of the hull. Come on down and I'll show you around. All right, so now that you're down here in the owner's version hull, um, you can see we have a queen berth here. It's semi walk around. So positive of a semi walk around it means you can kind of access the side corners of the bed to actually make the bed a lot of boats that you'll see won't have that walk around option so it's really hard to make the bed in the morning or in the evening we've got a lot of storage underneath and um cooper usually sleeps in bed with us but we do have his um doggy bed down below if he so chooses uh so above the bed here we have our sores which are more of just a ceremonial thing um <laughs> yes bud uh, so I got my Navy sword, which was passed down to me from my great great grandfather through my uh, grandfather through my father and then uh, Lee got his sword when he joined the Marine Corps. You want to go down, bud? Go ahead. And they more or less serve a ceremonial purpose, but you never know when you encounter pirates on the high seas. You might need to do some swashbuckling. All right, so over here on the inner side of the hole here, we also have another 32 inch screen, which does swivel out. So if you are sitting here on the outboard side on these, uh, your little settee here, you can enjoy the TV, but mostly we use this to watch Netflix and things like that in bed. All right, so this is our map of the world. Um, we've got a couple of different colors here. Uh, myself from my travels in the Navy and then just growing up are in black. From Lee's travel in the Marine Corps and um, growing up, he's in red. And then from what we've bun done together is in white. Hopefully we'll fill out this entire map on this boat one day. Perfect, all right, so here is another desk. You saw the nav station up earlier, but this deck has a nice little swivel out chair here so you can sit and get some work done on your computer and you can be away from all the loud noise when you have people over entertaining. So we've got some cabinet space up here, which we use for more clothes storage. We've got a lot of clothes. Um, we don't have a lot of extra gear that we need to store um, besides that. All right, so moving forward here on the uh, starboard side of our hull, we've got a nice little section off that goes between the actual bedroom and our full head here. We've got space for a onboard uh, washer and dryer combo. And then we've got some stand-up storage here, which we use for nicer clothes on the outboard side. 
continuing farther forward on the owner's version of the um, starboard hull here, we actually have our only full head on board. So a head is in more or less nautical terms, a bathroom. So we have our toilet here, which for us, um, we use salt water in our system. It's possible to convert it to a fresh water system. All right, so this is our sink space here and our full head. We've got storage behind each of these um, mirrors here. And then we also have storage beneath each of the sink sides, which has a, um, some toilet paper and we just use it for various storage. It gives us access to our sump pump, um, which will actually drain the gray water from the shower and the sink overboard. All right, and now I'm standing in the shower. So this is the farthest forward space that we have on board our, um, our side of the hull. So we have a nice little removable shower head here, which has the drain below. And we have plenty of uh, space for all of our showering needs as well. Plenty of room and a nice little bench here as well. Okay, so welcome to what we've affectionately named the guest hull. We're on the port side of the boat or the left side of the boat. Uh, first thing you see when you come down the stairs here is just like an extension of our pantry. We have four pretty substantial cabinets down here and that's what we use to store all of our dry goods and, and extra food down here, snacks and things. Over on the left here, is another it's a guest head uh, we, we've kind of turned it into more of a storage closet here so we have some some materials for projects we're working on extra paper towels uh, there's a guitar in here right now uh, so this this head is kind of turned into a storage closet but this is the forward bunk on the guest side so it's a little bit smaller of a bed but you know it's still really comfortable it's a this is where we, when we have a lot of people staying on the boat, um, they can stay up here. So also in this forward berth, uh, we have a water maker control panel. So when we're out at sea and we need to make more fresh water, uh, this is where we control our water desalinator from. Uh, to the left of that is a, just another little library. Um, we have a lot of books we need, that kind of take up a lot of space. Back aft on the guest side, this is our main guest cabin. So in the guest cabin here, we have a queen size bed that's semi walk around. Um, underneath this bed actually is our main, um, we have our inverter. There's an air conditioning unit underneath this bed. Uh, and all of our, the boat's main batteries are underneath this, this bed as well. So underneath here, there's kind of a lot of important stuff going on. Uh, a lot of the control panels for that are in these cabinets under here. Uh, but if if we had just a, another couple visiting for the weekend or visiting for a sale, this is where they would stay. And in addition to that that main guest cabin, this is kind of the main guest head. So we have another we have another toilet here, and it's another it's a it's what's called a wet head. So instead of having its own separate shower unit, the the sink itself pulls out and attaches up here and this whole room becomes a wet shower. Uh, so right here, this is one of our two escape hatches. Each hole has its own escape hatch. Uh, and in the event of an emergency, we'd be able to open this up and escape underneath the boat if we had to. Um, but also underway, when we're out at sea and there's not an emergency, it's a really cool place to kind of look and you just see the water rushing past uh, underneath the boat. It's a really cool, re really cool little spot. Biggest struggle is definitely the maintenance. It's um, it's it's pretty constant. We have a pretty good routine, a pretty good spreadsheet um, that lists out when and how frequently what what maintenance needs to be done, whether it's to the bottom of the boat um, or to the engines or to um, you know touching up, waxing, buffing, and waxing the outside. There's constantly. There, there's always a project that needs to be done and keeping track of that is probably the hardest thing um, especially on a you know kind of a larger boat there's uh, the projects tend to take longer and there's more of them so keeping track of all of that is it's the biggest challenge for sure especially on an older boat like ours but mm -hmm. on the flip side of the argument someone who loves taking on projects this could be the dream that you're looking for because you can really take on each one of those projects and you have the vision and 
for exactly what you know it has to be done and you can really make each boat that you take on your home. Yeah, I feel like we've definitely done that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of projects we've done in the last year have really made this feel like kind of just a boat to feeling like an actual home. There's a lot of definitely all blood, sweat and tears in, in every corner of this boat from a us. Of, a lot of tears. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath this compartment, there's a big storage area. We have our uh, solar generator and our wind generator control panels under here, and then one of our two engine compartments. Um, we have two 55 horsepower diesel engines. So these two 55 horsepower diesel engines give us about a max speed of eight knots in the water uh, on a good day. And if you look over here, more to the right, this is our 12 foot dinghy. Um, 20 horsepower engine and we can electrically lift it up with that winch up and out of the water to keep it keep it from getting dirty and we store it up here on these chains when we're underway. So above the dinghy here we have four solar panels which put out about 1200 watts of power for us and on either side of the solar panels are our two wind generators um, which we use when we're at anchor and when we're underway to just generate a little bit of extra power so we can keep things running on the boat without using our generator. So here's our little propane grill. It's great in the summertime when you don't want to turn a hot oven on or use the stove on the inside of the boat because it does get kind of hot in there. Uh, so it's just great to cook outside, uh, especially when you got a bunch of people over. Just have a nice little barbecue. So back here, uh, another thing we love to do is scuba dive. So having a scuba compressor like this one on the boat is really nice because it allows us just to fill up our tanks um, on the boat instead of going to a dive shop and having them do it for us. All right, so we are now in the aft kind of cockpit area here. This is our favorite place to entertain in the summer or just even on a nice warm evening. Um, we don't have an enclosure built right now. It's one of our future projects. Speaking of projects, as you can see here, these three cushions are in are complete. Uh, the rest of these are in the works. We are remaking the, the cushion covers by hand. That way we can um, officially rename the boat. As you can see here, we have the old boat name here, Orsinius. Um, once they're all covered, we can rename them. And it also gives us a nice durable cover for Cooper here because he likes to poke holes in all of our plastics, don't you bud? So underneath Cooper right now is the, um, the propane tanks. We have two of them on board. We have to replace them about once every 15 to 20 days they power the oven the three burner stove and uh, the grill that lee mentioned earlier um, over here to the right we also have our generator which powers all of the equipment on board uh, when we're underway that can't be powered itself by solar or wind power so um, there's a lot of things like the fridges that uh, once we've turned on more things like the televisions projectors things like that we have to actually turn on the generator to make sure that all those things are running running sustainably and then over here, there's just more storage to the left, lots of tools, things like that. But this table here folds out. So um, in the summer, once we're serving meals, after Lee's cooked us a nice dinner out on the grill here, we can unfold this table here and it'll serve up to eight people. Uh, so overhead here, we've got a couple fishing rods. We also have some trolling lines on the um, port and starboard sides here, as you can see. So we can lay out some line while we're underway and catch some fish. Um, we're super excited for those summer evenings where we can catch ourselves some hopefully deep sea tuna and um, fillet up some tuna on the grill and maybe make some sushi underway. All right, so right now I'm in front of our wet bar outside here. Um, it's super convenient because we get an extra fridge under this storage space as well as an ice maker, which is great for those hot summer days and you can uh, cool down either the cooler or one of your drinks that you're drinking out um, on the bow while you're underway. All right, in case you were wondering, uh, we are a safe boat. We are in accordance with all the um, Coast Guard regulations. So for every person that comes on board, we have a life jacket. And this is where we store them. So we've got some overhead storage here. A little loud, but it hold, uh, holds all of our life jackets. Right now we have 14 on board. So if you're ever in the area of San Diego, hit us up. We'll take you on our way. All right, so welcome up to the uh, flybridge. That's what makes this uh, lagoon a 440F. The F stands for flybridge. So we have the bridge actually center line and higher up and above for the best possible 360 view for doing pier work, contacts, things like that. Whatever you're dealing with out at sea, I think this is the absolute best way to travel with a catamaran sailboat. A lot of catamarans will have a helm off to the port or starboard side, 
where it's off center, which makes pure work a little bit more of a challenge, but having it up here center line is just the, the best possible option for doing anything you could possibly think of while underway. We have all Ray, Ray Marine electronics up here. So this is our chart plotter, which is just a repeater of everything that you saw downstairs. So it just transmits all the data up here. And then we could pull up whatever combination of resources or data you'd like to have on any of these three Ray Marine repeaters. So you can pull up wind, um, sea state, anything that you could possibly imagine for sailing. And then you also have control of your anchor. This is the helm steering wheel here. So this is uh, where you actually drive. Whereas down below you saw that we had the port and starboard uh, diesel control. This is where you actually have control of the rudders. Um, you can control the direction of the ship using the diesels because it is a catamaran. You can control the swing of the boat using that, um, the difference in throttle controls between the port and starboard hull. But once you center out those throttles and you've got them even, or you're just sailing using the rudder, it, is the best option at the helm. You also have down here um, the starting panel for your port and starboard diesel and then your um, this right here is how you stop the diesel engines. You have to choke, choke the diesels out. All right so welcome to the best part of the boat in my opinion. These are our two trampolines up forward. They can each support the weight of three people or maybe five dogs. Um, in my opinion underway this is the place to be because you're you're one with nature you're one with the sea the, the waves are rushing underneath uh, you'll get dolphins playing off the bow you can reach out and almost touch them cooper loves it it's his favorite place to lounge it really is the best place to be on the boat all right so we're at the very far uh forward most part of our boat here um, right now i'm kind of hanging off of our jib so it's our uh, forward sail we also have what's called a bow spring where we can either put a code zero or what's called a screecher so a larger sail which gives us more sail area to really harness that wind and get that extra couple of knots that we're looking to travel a little bit faster. We've also got somewhere called princess seats where we've got on the bow both port and starboard here for nice enjoyment with our little koozies. So underneath those princess seats we've got um, these two sail lockers which are about eight feet in depth and um, what a lot of people will do is they'll convert them into berths for extra people to sleep in while underway but what we have them now is just strict storage We'll use them for lines, we'll use it, we have our extra fenders in there which keep the boat from rocking and rubbing against the pier. And we also have our extra cushions and you know some Christmas decorations down there. The coolest, one of the coolest parts about living on a boat is basically just being able to pick up your home and especially when we're we're sticking around the Southern California area mm -hmm. uh, it's just take your whole home and move it somewhere mm -hmm. for the weekend or for a week uh, just go sit at an anchor um, hang out practice sailing and have some friends over and go explore cool places along the coast yeah one of our favorite things to do is we'll go over to Glorietta Bay or up in uh, Mission Bay and we'll just anchor out for the weekend We'll dingy people to shore, we'll go grab some firewood, make a nice bonfire on the beach and just enjoy that. It's the perfect so Southern California living where you can be outdoors and on the ocean at the same time. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today on our boat tour. Um, we really hope you enjoy it as much as we love living aboard. Maybe we helped you convert from van life to boat life or <laughs> from whatever you're living into boat life. But we really think if, a, if you're fine with downsizing and you love a sustainable lifestyle, we really think boat life could be a life for you and you could definitely do it with you and your family. Um, if you're interested in following along in our story, you can follow us at not.loss.sailing on Instagram and you can see all the ups and downs of everything that we're doing here on the boat and all of our future travels on board. <laughs>